Graham Jones, welcome to AFC Bournemouth. Um, just give us your first impressions of what you've seen. Um, Premier League club uh, with Premier League facilities and uh, apart from a name, Premier League players. So really impressed um, and what I expected. A uh, good football club, consistent football club in terms of longevity here with players and staff. Um, and uh, so far, so good. You had an illustrious playing career and that's uh, you've taken that in, into the coaching. Just talk us through your philosophy as a coach. Well, I don't think anybody's ever described my playing career as illustrious, Neil, but I'll take it from you, no problem. Um, philosophy as a, as a coach, without doubt, is to try and control the game with the ball and try and control the game without the ball. Sometimes you need to do that. There's been uh, good examples of that last season in the Championship. Nottingham Forest were fantastic without the ball, let you have it and hit you on the counter. And during my time as a manager, I had to adopt sort of both styles, depending on who we're playing. So, But I'm from a possession-based school. That was where we started in, with myself and Roberto in uh, 2007. And always looked to score goals and uh, win football matches, because ultimately, if you're going to win something, that's what you need to do. Just tell us, um, Jason Tindall, how, how do you know him? Do you, was there any link beforehand? Yeah, I mean, I always got on well with Jason, Eddie, and I think um, we're sort of, we're different ages, but we came through the leagues together. Um, for example, I can remember as uh, way back with my time at Swansea, <coughs> uh, coming to Bournemouth and Eddie was first team coach to Kevin Bond and, and Rob Newman. Now, R Rob Newman had been my manager at, um, at Southend United, so I got on well with Eddie. Obviously, Eddie and Jason started working together and I just... I really like them as people. I think on the circuit you get you get a connection, I suppose, down to people's nature sometimes or not with others. And I always liked them. Simon Weatherston and myself played together at Boston United in 2003, 2004. So obviously I think Tinny sort of helped mine and Jason's relationship because uh, me, and, me and Simon are friends first and foremost. And I think through Simon we knew that uh, each person were, you know, were, de were decent football people. So, apart from a good feeling and speaking to Jason on the circuit, no more than that. But obviously, uh, he was well recommended by by Tinny. That illustrious playing career that I was talking about, Graham. Um, you came in came into the game the hard way. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, I think um, I would say the right way and the hard way. I don't mean that disrespectfully to the education that the players get today but there was a fight there because I desperately wanted to be a professional and I'd started at Millwall and got released at 18 and then all of a sudden I'm in non-league football and your dreams are shattered and you've you've got to pick yourself up you're 18 now you're playing in men's football if you want to continue because it, it leaves a lot of people a lot of people get left by the wayside and I didn't I fought and uh, when I got used to men's football I found I found myself becoming effective and obviously, luckily for me, I took an opportunity at Doncaster Rovers in 1993, a 23-year-old, after we won the FA Vars with Bridlington. And I've never, I've never been out of the game since. And you had a spell as an insulation engineer, I see. What, yeah. what was that all about? Well, my dad was an insulation uh, manager. Uh, he was a, a contracts manager for an insulation company. I was out of work and just playing non-league football. And... He didn't like me lying around during the day, you know, typical young teenager, Neil. And it was, come on, you're going to start working with me. And again, that that period in my life, that experience of having to get up at six o'clock every day and go and put a 10 hour shift in, then you get off offered overtime. And if you don't want to take it, you, you're scorned upon for not taking it and having to train on a Tuesday night and a Thursday night and play on a Saturday was it was a period that when I got back into the game, I was never, ever going to fail because uh, normal life and real life is is tough. And uh, it was a, a real rude awakening for me. Was it fair to say that Newcastle was your first taste of coaching with that preliminary 
license you've got there? That's incredible detail from you, Neil. Um, yeah, again, I, I left Millwall and, and my thoughts at that time was, uh, I want to coach and play, so I'm going to go to the States. And without a prelim license, you couldn't go to the States. I wanted to get in the soccer camps. and So I worked for football in the community at Newcastle United with a, an ex-player called Jeff Clark. And he was a wonderful man, Jeff. Still is. He's a physiotherapist at Dundee United now. And uh, Jeff sort of took me under his wing a little bit. And I got my prelim license. And instead of going to America, I, I met a girl. And, <laughs> and I ended up getting married and going nowhere near it. So... But it obviously it set me on a career path, which straight away I, I knew when I got back into the game as a player, I was always going to go into the coaching side. So you would have been quite young then. What sort of grabbed you about coaching? Uh, I was 18. Uh, nothing more than uh, love of the game. I mean, you know, I've had some really, really good experiences and some really bad experiences in football. But one thing that's always remained is my love for football. It's still there now. I still feel privileged. And I, I, I think that comes, Neil, from that background that I speak to you about. Haven't failing initially. Um, I don't ever disrespect the game. Um, and, yeah, I think that's where it came from. You got your A licence with Darren Moore, I think, in uh, 1999. And then you were working for Middlesbrough under-14s as well. Just tell us about those two well, experiences. Dar Dar Darren's a, he's a 25-year friendship I've got we play together at Doncaster obviously I was his assistant two years ago I love Darren but we were really close it was four or five years after we played together I think Darren was I was 29 which was young I think Darren was 25 we, would both had long seasons at we when I was at Wigan as a player we played Man City over two legs in a playoff final so I, I went down I'm guessing Neil now about the 22nd of May and it was 16 days at Lillishall then and Darren had just won the, he won promotion from the championship with Bradford City. So we're rooming together for 16 days and, you know, this air licence is going on well into June. And, um, I mean, obviously I had a great friendship with him, which made it a lot better. But I think at 29, it improved my knowledge of the game from a playing point of view. Um, and I think it did the same for Darren. I, I would have to recommend... Uh, for any footballer, go and do your licences as quick as you can. It'll be the best education you've got. So, yeah, that's that's where that came about. And then I was coming towards the end of my career. Applied for a job with Dave Parnaby at Middlesbrough Academy, and uh, I got the under 14s job as working with a, a guy called Kevin Taylor. And I had three and a half years then with Stan Nixon and Dave Parnaby showed me really what an example of what a coach should look like and how they should act. And Dev was a huge influence, as was Stan, and good education in a time where Middlesbrough won the FA Youth Cup and the academy was uh, was really strong with good local players. Um, yeah, so it was a it was a really really good football education. So we got Clough and Taylor, we got Harry and Jim, Eddie Howe and J Jason Tindall, and then obviously. Roberto Martinez and Graham Jones. What what is it about managerial double acts, Graham? Is it a chemistry type thing? Yeah, I think if I, I can only really speak about me and Rob. We, me and Rob were friends first and foremost because we we're playing colleagues at Wigan together, and it was even more than that because we had a real connection on the pitch. If I made a run, he had the ability to find telepathic. I suppose he had that quality. He could find you, and I love playing with Rob. Um, so, and then I think we're connected morally off the pitch and we spent a lot of time together. I used to stay at his twice a week and would speak about football and then you go your own separate ways. I think I went to St Johnson, he went to Motherwell and he ended up in Swansea. I was assistant manager at Hamilton and as soon as he got the job, he asked me to, to go in as assistant with him and it was just a, whatever he felt, I felt. It wasn't manager and assistant, it was, if we got beat, I felt it, I felt it exactly the same. And, Ultimately, it was the manager's responsibility, which I found, found out later when I became manager at Luton. Um, but we had, a, we had a, real, a real bond, I think. We're very, we're very, very different people that complemented each other really, really well um, at work, uh, on the training ground. And I think that was probably the biggest strength, but always based on the fact that we're friends first and foremost, and we could always uh, tell each other the truth behind closed doors. So it was a really, really healthy relationship and um, one I thoroughly enjoyed. 
club management is one thing and international management is obviously another thing and your trophy cabinet at home had that FA Vars winner's medal and then you had a, a World Cup third place medal as well. Uh, you must have been pinching yourself. Yeah, I mean, Neil, I was, I was saying to you that it, it all means the same. You know, at that time, the FA Vars was a World Cup final and you, we wanted to win it. But as you progress through the game, I was lucky enough to win an FA Cup final in 2013. That was huge. And then, you know, World Cup semi-final got knocked out. But, you know, I'm an English boy playing against England for a, a bronze medal in a, a third and fourth place playoff. And I can assure you, I felt exactly the same. I wanted to win it because with the greatest respect, it was only, you had to finish third in order to get a medal. And absolutely proudest punch that I've got a bronze medal at a World Cup um, in me safe. So, um, yeah, they all, they all meant a lot. They all didn't mean any different. It's just something at the time that you really, really wanted to win. But. Uh, if somebody had said to me in 1993 that you would be one game away from the biggest game in, in, in world football, then I would have certainly took it. So really proud of that. Why do they call you Bonner? Bonner. I've had, a, I've had it since I was four year old at school. I think Jones Bones, there was two Joneses at school, so we're both called Bonesy. And then somebody said, why don't you call him Bonner? And it just stuck. And in the northeast, it's, there's a, a Guy Fawkes night is Bonner night. A bonner, uh, you call it a Bonner fire. So somebody said Bonner and it's stuck and everybody apart from my wife calls me Bonner. <laughs> Graham, um, all the best with everything you do here and uh, thanks very much for your time today. Brilliant, thanks Neil. Thank you.